Welcome to this worship service for Lakeside Community Presbyterian Church for July 19th. I am Susie Smith and I am a, I've been a member of Lakeside Community Presbyterian Church for eight years and I sing in the choir. I miss singing in the choir, uh, but soon. And I'm also the church custodian. Obviously, our preference would be to be meeting together in our sanctuary, but, get, but what is happening, we are grateful that we can still come together and worship our God through this internet service. Our adult virtual Sunday school on the book of Isaiah started on July 12th. Even if you miss that class, you can join the class each Sunday at 11 a.m. You can find the link on our website, lakesidepc.org, to join the class. Our new women's Bible study starts on Monday, July 22nd at 3 p.m. This study will be looking at the book of James. The link for this study can be found on our website. For more information, contact Linda Sunkel. Now let's turn our focus on what really matters. Will you pray with me? Father God, in spite of all the challenging things that surround us, we know that you are alone, are the real constant we need in our lives. Even though we have proven ourselves unworthy, you have shown that you still love us. You promise that where we gather in your name and call out to you, you will be there with us. Help us to feel your presence as we worship you, praise you, get refreshed through you, and gain insight from you. We love you, Lord. Amen. Lord, and I realize how inadequate I am. I compare myself to your son, Jesus, and realize how imperfect I am. I'm not worthy to be anywhere near you, and yet you welcome me. Your love and mercy is beyond my understanding. through your Son, paying the price for my sins, I'm acceptable to you. And so I bring these prayers of our congregation to you. We thank you, Lord, for being a constant in our lives where there are so few constants. 
and we thank you for your abundance giving. You provide for us. You provide for us much more than we ever expect, and often in ways that are better than we were hoping, but totally different than what we thought. We thank you that even though we're not gathering in one physical location, we are still a community that is able to gather, and you are in our midst. We pray for the churches in our state, particularly the ones who reopened and now have to change back. We pray that they will find ways to keep their members in the Word and in community. We pray for the leadership throughout our country. We pray that they listen to you, Lord, for the best way forward for our world and our country. We pray for our medical people. Pray that they can keep safe while continuing to offer their services and pray that they can feel how much they are needed and appreciated. We pray for our schools as they continue to look at the best and safest way to educate our children starting in the fall. We pray for the social workers and mental health people who have to reach out to their clients in new ways. We pray that nobody falls through the cracks. And Lord, we thank you for the miraculous progress on Rick Davis. And we pray for his continued progress as he recovers. We pray for Frank Morin. He is having deep nerve pain in his back. And we pray that the epidural that he will be getting on July 20th will bring him relief from the pain. And Lord, we pray in gratitude that Diane Tooley got word that she does not have COVID-19. We pray that you continue to guide her physicians as they work through the issues that are causing her problems. Lord, we pray for people in isolation who are suffering from depression. Pray that they get the help they need so that they don't continue to slide further into the feeling of isolation and hopelessness. We pray that you will reach out to them and hug them, either spiritually or through a trusted friend who unexpectedly gives them a call so they realize they aren't alone. But help them, Lord, to realize you are with them. And Father, we know there are other things in our hearts and minds, but right now we may not remember them. We trust you to handle these things as well. And now, Father, we pray in the way you, your Son taught your disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
by one Problems come And dreams get shattered Times that seem so hard a disciple named Ananias. The Lord called to him in a vision. Ananias. Yes, Lord, he answered. The Lord told him, go to the house of Judas on Straight Street and ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul. He is praying. In a vision he has seen a man named Ananias. And this man came and placed his hands on him to restore his sight. But Lord, Ananias answered, I have heard many reports about this man and all the harm that he has done to your holy people in Jerusalem. And he has come here with authority from the chief priest to arrest all who call on your name. But the Lord said to Ananias, Go. This man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles and their kings and to the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. Then Ananias went to the house and entered it. Placing his hands on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here, has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes, and he could see again. He got up and was baptized, and after taking some food, he regained his strength. Saul in Damascus and Jerusalem. Saul spent several days with the disciples in Damascus. At once 
he began to preach in the synagogues that Jesus is the Son of God. All those who heard him were astonished and asked, Isn't he the man who raised havoc in Jerusalem among those who call on his name? And hasn't he come here to take them as prisoners to the chief priests? Yet Saul grew more and more powerful and baffled the Jews living in Damascus by proving that Jesus is the Messiah. On this Lord's Day, we welcome members and friends of the Lakeside Community Presbyterian Church to this time of worship. It is always a joy to come together in worship. Worship is indeed a celebration, a celebration of our life with God and a celebration of our life with one another, with the body of Christ, with the people of God. The psalmist says, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing praises in the assembly of his faithful people. Praise the Lord. Let us join together in prayer. Oh God, we give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks for this time in which we can come together as your people. Speak to our hearts and to our minds. Lift our spirits, O oh God. May our spirits encounter your spirit in this service of worship. We pray these things in the name of Christ. Amen. In this time of worship, we are first going to join together and dedicate a prayer quilt. Let us join together in prayer. Gracious God, we come to you because you are our Lord. You are the creator of life. You are the source of all that there is. We come to you because you are a merciful God and a gracious God, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. We have come this day, O oh God, to dedicate this quilt to Deborah Abraham, friend of Sherry Regas. Cancer has spread to her stomach, O oh Lord, and we pray for this new round of chemotherapy. We pray that this new round of therapy will work and it will shrink the cancer. We pray, O oh God, that your healing power will be upon her and infuse her. And we pray that this quilt, this prayer quilt, will be a source of inspiration to her, a source of comfort to her in the days and weeks and months to come. And we pray all of this in the name of Christ. Amen. A man was stepping out of the shower one evening when his wife yelled out to him to run down to the basement and turn off the iron, which she had accidentally left on. Without bothering to grab a towel or a robe, he headed down to the basement. And just when he reached the bottom stair, the lights came on and dozens of friends and colleagues jumped out and shouted, surprise! His wife had planned a surprise party for his 40th birthday. Yes, surprises are a part of life, are they not? Good surprises, and unfortunately, bad ones. Can you think of a time in which you were completely surprised? What an experience when something totally unexpected occurs. You interview for a job, for example. Uh, you believe that the interview didn't go well, you feel down, you kind of write it off, and then the phone rings and you're offered the job. You make a ridiculously low offer on a house. You know it'll never be accepted, but it is. The owners accept your offer. Or you learn that you're pregnant. Or you unexpectedly meet someone and you fall in love. Or you reluctantly buy a ticket, you know it's a waste of money, and you win Powerball. Or yes, someone throws you a surprise birthday party. Now in saying this, 
I'm not being a Pollyanna here. I'm not looking through rose-colored glasses. I am very aware of disappointment and hurt in life. I'm very aware that this is indeed a part of the experience of, of our years upon this earth. As a pastor, I have ministered to families in every conceivable situation. I'm aware of the mournful side of life, of the unfair side of life. But nevertheless, sometimes we get so wrapped up in the negative, on dwelling on disappointments, on being pessimistic, and giving in to bitterness, that we're blind and we miss out on life's joyful surprises. For you see, surprises are also a part of the kingdom of God. Surprises are also a part of God's will for our lives. Surprises are a part of God's actions in this world. They too are a part of God's purposes for our lives. God, whom we worship, is also a God of surprises. For example, out of all of the people of the world, God called Abraham and his descendants and formed the Jewish people as God's chosen people. Why? We don't know. It's a mystery. It was God's gracious decision. God spoke to Israel through the prophet Isaiah. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one in whom my soul delights. I will put my spirit upon him. I have made a covenant with my people. You shall be a light to the nations. Rather than a professional soldier, God chose a shepherd boy named David to have a contest with and ultimately defeat the Philistine champion Goliath and then later on ultimately to become the king of Israel. God surprised the world with the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, the Savior of the world in a lowly town, Bethlehem. God surprised the world at Easter. Jesus was crucified, died, and buried, and he rose from the dead, and he appeared to many. God surprised the world at Pentecost when he sent the Holy Spirit. That Holy Spirit fell upon and indwelled the disciples in the upper room in Jerusalem, and the birth of the church occurred. In Psalm 90, the psalmist says this, Surprise us in the morning with your steadfast love so that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. I love that prayer. I love that psalm. Surprise us in the morning with your steadfast love. I say amen to that. One of my daily prayers, whenever I face a situation that is challenging or difficult, is this. God Surprise me with your grace. O oh Lord, surprise me with your grace. God has surprised me with his grace, with his faithfulness, with his strength. When my heart was weak, when I was afraid, when I was discouraged, how about you? Jesus constantly surprised people. Jesus shocked everyone when he raised Lazarus from the grave. Jesus treated women, women who had low social standing in his day, with respect. And he offended many. He spoke to women in public. He even spoke to prostitutes. He even spoke to Samaritan women. To the horror of many, Jesus conversed with and healed lepers. Jesus encountered Zacchaeus. You probably recall the story in Luke. A Jewish tax collector for the Romans. Zacchaeus would knock on your door and say, Hi, I'm from the Roman government and I'm here to help you. He was hated. He was loathed by his fellow Jews. Because he worked for the Romans, he was considered a traitor, and because he had become rich by excessively charging taxes. He was a short man, a small man, 
avoided crowds because he knew that if he ever got into a crowd, he would be injured. One day in Jericho, Zacchaeus heard that Jesus was coming to town, and so he climbed a tree, and from the safety of a tree, he was looking down and he saw Jesus. And then scripture tells us that Jesus saw him. Jesus looked up and saw him and he said, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. Surprise! Jesus was also surprised by people's reactions to him. Like the extraordinary faith of an unlikely person, a Roman centurion, who had asked Jesus to heal his servant. Jesus said, I will come to your home and cure him. The centurion replied, I am not worthy to have you come to my home, but only say the word and my servant will be healed. And Jesus responds, truly I tell you, nowhere in Israel have I found such faith. Jesus was also surprised and disappointed by the lack of faith among many in his hometown, his hometown of Nazareth. Recall his words, prophets are not without honor except in their hometown and in their own house. We read, Jesus did not do many miracles there because of their lack of faith. The Bible also speaks about surprising changes in people's lives. Like the story from Acts, the story for this morning's lesson. Before his conversion to Christ, Paul was known in Jewish circles as Saul. Saul was an agent of the Sanhedrin, the governing body of the temple in Jerusalem. And he was charged with going out and arresting followers of that blasphemer and that political agitator named Jesus. Saul arrested, we are told, and imprisoned many of Jesus' followers. His name, his very name, struck terror in the hearts of Jesus' followers. One day, Saul underwent a dramatic conversion. On his way to Damascus, he was temporarily blinded. And then he hears a voice. He hears the voice of the Lord calling out to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? He is brought to Damascus by temple soldiers for a period of rest. And in the midst of these events, the Lord speaks to Ananias. And he says this, Get up and go to the house of Judas and look for a man of Tarsus named Saul. He has seen you in a vision where you come to him, lay hands on him, and he will regain his sight. Now, does Ananias say, yes, Lord, I will go? No problem, Lord, I'm on it. Rather, Ananias replies, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much evil he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And here, he has authority from the chief priests to bind all who call upon the name of the Lord. And in essence, the Lord says to him, Yes, that's true, Ananias. I thank you for sharing. Now go. Go to Saul. The Lord will not allow Ananias to wimp out. And so Ananias goes to Saul, lays hands on him, witnesses to him, baptizes him, and Saul regains his sight, and he commits his life to following Christ. Surprise, Ananias. Surprise, Saul. Yes, there are still surprises in the kingdom of God. Wherever God reigns, wherever God's word is alive, wherever God's hand is at work, wherever God's will is being accomplished, wherever there is faith, there are still surprises. In instances when people have their hopes and dreams dashed, and rather than giving in to a life of bitterness, God's grace leads them to a new goal, a new passion, a new dream. In instances when you are ill and by God's grace you recover your health. In instances where you are grieving 
and you received an unexpected outpouring of support and love in the prayers of other people and family and friends and fellow church members, sometimes even from strangers. God still surprises us. Dr. Ben Carson, who has uh, become known throughout the world as a premier brain surgeon, uh, is a name that is familiar to many of us. You may not, though, know about his past, that he had an uncontrollable temper as a young person. In his book, Take the Risk, Dr. Carson writes about the day that he invited God to come into his life to help him deal with his critical character flaw. He writes this, One day, as a 14-year-old in the ninth grade, I was hanging out at the house with my friend Bob listening to the radio when Bob suddenly leaned over and dialed the tuner to another station. I'd been enjoying the song playing on the first station, so I reached over and flipped it back. Bob switched stations again. A wave of rage welled up. Almost without thinking, I pulled out the pocket knife I always carried and in one continuous motion flicked open the blade and lunged viciously right at my friend's stomach. Incredibly, the point of the knife struck Bob's large metal buckle and the blade snapped off in my hands. Bob raised his eyes from the broken piece of metal in my hand to my face. He was too surprised to say anything, but I could see the look of terror in his eyes. I, I'm sorry, I sputtered, and then I dropped the knife. I ran for home, horrified by the realization of what I'd just done. I burst into our empty house. I locked myself in the bathroom, and I sat down on the floor. Miserable, frightened. I could no longer deny that I had a severe anger problem and that I'd never achieve my dream of being a doctor unless I could bring it under control. I admitted to myself that there was no way that I could control it alone. And so I prayed, Lord, please, please help me. You've got to help me, Lord. Take this temper away. You promised that if I ask anything in faith, you will do it, and I believe, O oh Lord, that you can change me. Gradually, I stopped crying. My hands quit shaking. And I was filled with an inner assurance that God had answered my prayer. Uncontrolled anger has never again been a threat to me or to anyone else. God has provided and will provide whatever strength I need to control my anger. God's surprises also come when he desires to use you and to use me in unexpected ways. All it takes is a listening ear, an open heart, a willingness to serve, surrendering oneself to God, humbling oneself in prayer, and the courage, just a little courage, to step out. That's all. I want you to think about some person you know who is struggling. Some person that you know who is in need. Surprise them. Surprise yourself. Do something that you might not normally do. Reach out in a way that is outside of your comfort zone. Stretch yourself. Take a leap of faith. Because God wants to use you and me in unexpected ways, in ways that you may not feel you're ready for, but God knows that you're ready for. Just like God used Ananias to visit and to witness to Saul. When we turn to God in prayer and in faith, amazing things indeed can happen. I want you to hear this word of the Lord. You know more than you think you know. You are stronger than you think you are. You are more capable than you give yourself credit for. You can endure more than you believe. God will supply what you need when you are following his calling. 
God can make things happen through you when you trust in Him. Yes, God brings surprises into our lives. Surprises are a part of the kingdom of God. Be alert, be ready for God's surprises in your life. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. John Neumeister, my wife Eileen and I have been members of this church for 25 years. I'm currently retired. Um, I retired uh, from the Navy Reserves in 1994 and from a pharmaceutical company in 2007. Um, I got started, I do, you see me a lot in the music program, involved in the music program with the church. I got involved in music when I was probably 10 years old, uh, playing trumpet. Um, I have an awful lot of instruments. I have, last count, I had um, about 51 instruments in my music room at home, uh, many of which I play at. I just, I don't just, I can't play them all yet, but you know, I'm retired. Maybe I'll have an opportunity to get to use them. So far, trumpet, trombone, E flat alto horn, baritone, I can play all of those. Uh, guitar, banjo, mandolin, I can pretty much play those. But I have, you know, violins, uh, flutes, clarinets, saxophones. Um, I have a lot of instruments that I got when I was overseas with the Navy. A guzheng from China, an erhu from uh, Korea, a banderia from the Philippines, a didgeridoo from Australia. So I have an awful lot of different instruments. I also have a, a dulcimer. Um, years ago I started building musical instruments. I've uh, built uh, dulcimers, mandolins, banjos, and guitars. And uh, my hope is that I can continue building them. I've been recently, <laughs> with the shutdown, been able to get into my garage and clean it up and start to set up my workshop, so maybe I should be able to get to doing some of that stuff. Um, I do have a home, uh, at my home, a recording studio, sort of. It's a 12 by 24 foot room, and on one end is all the uh, recording equipment. Uh, some of the songs that you've seen or heard uh, with uh, Linda and Ron and myself uh, singing uh, were recorded in that studio and mixed down and then uh, presented to you. Um, my dream for the studio, I'd like, to, I'd like to get some sound dampening and things like that so that uh, it can be a little bit more professional. The equipment is not bad, I just need to uh, get the acoustics in the room a little bit better to make better sound. Um, <clears throat> Uh, the home that we're currently in, we purchased in 2014. Uh, it's in Eucalyptus Hills. Um, when we bought it, it was listed as dated, but well-maintained. Um, maybe not so much um, well-maintained. We've had to do an awful lot. We've re-roofed it. We've knocked out walls. We've uh, put solar, um, knocked out a nine-foot diameter uh, southwestern-style uh, fireplace that was in between the living room and the, and the dining room because it took up too much space. Knocked it out, it went clear up through the roof. Knocked it out and put a fireplace on the, on the far wall. Put all new dual pane low E windows in. Uh, retiled the house throughout. Um, repainted, restuccoed. Uh, I mean, just about everything you can do to a house we've done. Uh, in the main bathroom, there was a tub in there. I took the tub out and made it a 
a shower in there. It's, it's kind of nice. The uh, master bedroom um, was kind of, I called it the master bowling alley because it was uh, 7 by 19 feet. And um, uh, we boosted that out, so now it's 16 by 19, quite a bit bigger, and we have uh, walk-in closets and a, and a nice, nice master bath. Um, so uh, when we when we first moved in there, there weren't very many plants. There were hedges. Uh, there was um, citrus plants uh, or citrus trees, about eight or nine of the citrus trees, and a couple of avocados. The avocados have died, but the citrus are going strong. Uh, we redid the pool entirely. Um, there were seven full-size, I mean 20 feet tall, queen palms that we took out. But other than that, there really weren't any other plants. And if you come to our place now, it's, it's like a jungle. Eileen, with her love for plants, has, has pretty much um, transformed that place outside. We've done an awful lot of hardscaping outside. Uh, uh, block walls uh, for the landscaping, um, some uh, some concrete, broken concrete pathways, and and things like that. Um, Eileen and I, well, as a matter of fact, this December we'll have been married uh, 25 years, um, but we knew each other for 10 years before that. We met in the uh, Doberman Pincher Club of San Diego, and we were both members there. and. Um, we went on our first date in October of 1993 when, uh, when uh, I was the national show chairman for the Doberman Pincher Club of America's national show that was held at the Bahia Sur in uh, Mission Bay. There were over 900 Dobermans there in the hotel. We had the whole hotel. It was, uh, it was a pretty amazing event. Um, again, Eileen loves plants. Uh, on, on and off, she's been the president of the uh, Lakeside Garden Club for probably 11 of the last 13 years and uh, she just recently uh, gave it up. She needed, she needed a break. Um, we have three sons that we adopted in 2001, uh, Damian, Edward, and Jesse. They were four, six, and eight. Uh, Jesse is going to get married in, on September 5th uh, to a wonderful young lady and we love her parents and, uh, and they're great people. Um, and uh, Edward works as a community service officer for the Mason Police Department. Uh, did I say Edward? Yeah, you no, J Jesse works. Jesse works for the Mesa Police Department as a community service officer. Edward works for AutoZone right here in Lakeside, and Damien works for uh, Santee Walmart, has been for a number of years. Um, they're, uh, they're all alive, <laughs> and they're there was some bets early on whether or not that would actually happen, but so far it has. Um, uh, one of the, we got the boys involved early in lots of different things, uh, sports. I, early on, I was the soccer coach for two of the three boys for three years running. So um, they were soccer early on, and then we got them involved in scouting. And I'm, I'm pleased and, and very proud to say that all three of them uh, became Eagle Scouts in scouting. And um, so. You know, they, uh, they have a love for the outdoors. They love to go camping. Uh, in fact, uh, Jesse uh, has bought his own travel trailer that he goes out camping with. He goes out to the desert, and sometimes he joins the uh, usual suspects when we go camping uh, different places. Uh, he, he's been up at the retreat uh, camping with his new, uh, new trailer, and uh, they just, uh, you know, they're... You can always ask for better, but I can't say I can complain about the, about the kids. Um, I, some of you may or may not know, uh, Eileen and I are both involved in local politics. Um, I've been a member of the Lakeside Community Planning Group. Uh, this is my fourth year. My term ends in December. Um, I don't intend to run again. Um, uh, I just have other things I'd like to do. I'm uh, involved with the Lakeside Optimists. Uh, they're sort of a benevolent organization for youth in and around Lakeside and um, they give away somewhere between seventy and ninety thousand dollars to youth uh, organizations and things in and around Lakeside. Um, they also are the, the sponsor for the Troop 45 
uh, Lakeside, which is the second oldest troop in San Diego. It's the oldest continuously sponsored troop. The uh, Optimists have sponsored them since uh, April 1949. Um, so I'm really proud of that troop. Um, um, I'm a member of the Optimists to help out. I help out with the Bulls Only Rodeo. That's our biggest fundraiser, which of course was canceled for July. Currently it's set up for the first Friday and Saturday in November, but I have some doubts that it, that it will actually happen. Eileen, on the other hand, has been a member or on the Lakeside uh, Water Board, an elected official on the Lakeside Water Board for, this is her 32nd year, and she's going to uh, run again. Um, she is, if you look at all of the water boards in all of San Diego County, she is the one that has the most experience. She has been on the water board the longest. Uh, they appreciate her insight. And the fact that she's been there a long time uh, gives a good sense of history. Uh, why did they make decisions that they made? Uh, Lakeside Water District is probably, it has the lowest rates of any water district in uh, San Diego County. And um, probably the best uh, financial, financial outlook. They have a a 50-year and even a 100-year plan of what they want to do, so they're forward-looking. Um, not sure what else I can tell you about our family. Uh, we're alive, we're happy, we're happy to be here, we're looking forward to uh, coming back to church when we can come uh, to uh, regular church services. Thank you very much.